Shalom, shalom to the family. Street baptism back with more knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that we believe comes directly from the Father through His Son, Yahusha, Yeshua, or Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Whichever pronunciation somebody decides to use is all right. According to the Word of God, as long as you call him on the Creator or the Father in the name or the reputation of His only begotten, and that's the truth according to His Word. Much love to the family and the individuals trying to follow in the footsteps of the Messiah and live how he lived while he was here and walk how, walk how he walked on the earth in truth and sincerity by way of humility, by way of humility. Forgive me, y'all. <clears throat> I got something stuck in my throat, apparently. But street baptism back. We going to get it. And this is going to be another video um, that's a part of the series of segments concerning short scriptures and the understanding of these short scriptures what this means essentially is we won't be going through a whole chapter we're going to look at after uh providing the context and looking at the context we're going to go through and try to you know receive some understanding concerning one or two or three scripts in one chapter and go over here and look into a little bit of hebrew and you know however the spirit moves wherever the spirit takes us praise god so give me one second Forgive me, y'all. Forgive me. We back. We back. We back. So what we going to look at, what we going to be looking at in this video is Acts chapter 3 and verse 19 through verse 21. But we also going to jump over to uh, Psalm 19. Praise God. And again, try to receive some knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Praise God. Hopefully it comes from the Father. Hopefully um, it's understood. Hopefully it makes sense. So first we going to, um, you know, get the context of Acts chapter 3. So anybody on their own time can look through this whole chapter. Acts chapter three is the gate called beautiful account or the gate called beautiful story. So Peter and John, they go into the temple. It's a gate there that the people used to call the beautiful gate before the temple. As you enter the temple or as you enter the um, territory of the temple, you know, in the different sections that you can um, enter into the court of women, the court of the Gentiles, the court of the, uh, the priests or the court of the men, the court of the Israelites. <clears throat> etc etc but so they end up finding this lame man that the people used to sit there um oftentimes and he would sit there and ask for alms so he asked he asked um he asks peter and john for alms and they say we, we don't have no alms to give you but what we can do is heal you and provide to you the power of god so they end up healing this man and the people are like dang they basically uh wandering they're amazed, like, how did y'all do this? So now Peter has to explain, Peter and John have to explain to these people, y'all shouldn't be uh, wondering and amazed. Y'all shouldn't be baffled at this. This shouldn't be a head scratcher as if we did this by, by way of our own power, but it's by the power of Christ, who y'all kept in the hands of Pilate when he asked y'all, did y'all wanna, did y'all want me to release the king of the Jews? Or do y'all want me to release this murderer and this robber Barabbas. They said, give us Barabbas. So he, uh, Peter and John are explaining it to these people. It's by this man's reputation through, uh, through him by God that we had his power to heal this man because they all knew that that man was lame for a long time, sitting at the gate asking for arms and nobody else had the power to heal him. <clears throat> Praise God, my fault. So that's the understanding. So now just real quick, because that's the context. So he said, y'all delivered up Christ, not understanding what his purpose was. So we're going to start at verse <clears throat> 17. Acts 3 and 17, it says, and now, brethren, I walk that through ignorance, she did it. I know that through ignorance, y'all did it, as did also your rulers. So the layman or the common people or the common men and the rulers um, uh, played a part. He says, but those things which God before has shewed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. So the most high didn't tell a lie. Whatever he spake already by the mouth of his prophets, he fulfilled it. Even though y'all didn't understand the prophets, y'all didn't understand Christ and his purpose, which means essentially y'all don't understand God, but it's cool. It's all right. So he says, repent ye therefore, meaning because of this, <clears throat> because y'all was ignorant before, now y'all can receive the knowledge of this. So repent. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Repent ye therefore because of this repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. So you want to repent and be converted because that's how your sins are blotted out. When? When are your sins going to be blotted out? 
when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And that's talking about when Christ returns. Ultimately, that's talking about when Christ returns and he shall send Jesus Christ. Here it is right here. <clears throat> or Hamashiach, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the restitution of my fault, until the times of restitution of all things. Let's talk about when he returns, when God sends him. That's when your sins are going to be blotted out. This is why you should be repenting every day. This is why you should aim to be converted every day. It says, which God have spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began, because the most high been said this, he been established this. This was already foreordained. Praise God. So what we want to look at here specifically is repent ye therefore and be converted. What does it mean to repent and be converted? Let's look at some of this in the Greek real quick. Let's look at the word repent. <clears throat> Forgive me, y'all. My phone going slow for whatever reason. Let's look at this word. Strong's G 3340. Metanaeo. Metanaeo. Metanaeo is the lexical form of this word or the root word here in the text. As we cl uh, click the Greek parson. It says it's an oris verb. It's an active imperative second person plural verb. What does oris mean? Because that's the tense. It says the definition of oris is characterized by its emphasis on punctilar action. That is the concept of the verb is considered without regard for past, present or future time. There is no direct or clear English equivalent for this tense, though it is generally rendered as a simple past tense in most translations. Praise God. And y'all can read the rest of this on your own time. If y'all haven't checked out the video concerning the blue letter Bible and how to use it and how to use this tool that people use, how to read it, how to understand it. Check out that video in the playlist on the channel, how to use your study tools. Here at Street Baptism, we're in the business of teaching people how to learn. We're not just teaching stuff. We're trying to teach people how to learn so they can teach people how to learn and they, and they can teach people how to learn. And we can keep this thing going kind of like paying it forward with Kevin Spacey. If anybody's ever seen that movie, praise God, we're trying to pay it forward as far as the wisdom, knowledge and understanding is concerned. <clears throat> so now we're going to click the number. It's a verb. It's an action. What does it mean? As we look at the Thayer's Greek lexicon, <clears throat> it says, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all, my fault. It says, and we're looking at the bold words here. It says to change one's mind. Repent means to change your mind. To repent, it says of on account of something as it's used here um, in the bowl right here is used as, as that as well. Here it says to change one's mind for the better heartily to heartily to a man with abhorrence of one's past sins. Heartily meaning in your mind to a man or to change a man means to change something to to root something up or to uproot something. Move it out the way and bring something in that's that's more um, significant or that makes more sense. That's what it means. Heartily to amend or to change or, or remove and bring something better with abhorrence, meaning dislike of one's past sins. That's what this means. Praise God. Repent. Let's do this, though, because we don't want to neglect any information. Praise God. As we go to the Adam Online Dictionary to get more understanding of what this word repent means. From circa 1300, from the 12th century, my fault from the 1200s, it says repenting. It says to be grieved over one's past and seek forgiveness. Praise God, because he said y'all did this through ignorance. Here in this uh, specific story, Peter is telling these people, y'all delivered up the Messiah, the only begotten son of the father of the creator. Y'all delivered him up through ignorance. Now you got to feel some type of way about that. Oh, you know what? We shouldn't have did that. That was crazy. When you keep reading this uh, story or this account in this chapter, they ended up feeling this way. And they end up joining the church and believing in Christ. Many people did. Praise God. To be grieved over one's past and seek forgiveness. Feel such regret for sins, crimes or omissions as produces amendment of life. Ultimately, it goes back to re here, perhaps an intensive prefix plus the vulgar Latin word penitere. 
to regret. This is literally what it means. It means to come back because that's what re means and to feel sorry for because pit is related to the word penitence. Praise God. Hmm. So that's what we're reading here. Repent ye therefore and be converted. What is this word converted? Strong's G 1994 epistrefo. 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 Here, as we click the, the Greek parson, this is also a verb, a orus verb, active imperative, second person plural. Praise God. This, so this verb comes with the same characteristics. It's just a different word. What does this mean? It says, and be converted. It says to turn to. Praise God. But we want to look at this real quick. So understand how to read this lexicon. They're giving you different renditions of this word or different formulations of this word or words that are related to this word with, with different um, characters, depending on whether it's past, present, future, etc. Praise God. But where it says from Homer down afterwards, it says the Septuagint for meaning this word, this Greek word is used in the Septuagint for a Hebrew word, meaning this Greek word has a Hebrew equivalent that is used for in the Septuagint in relation to the Hebrew Old Testament or the Masoretic text. It says for the word Hafak, Hafak, and Savav, and Hesev, and Pana, and times without number for Shuv. Remember Shuv, y'all. And it says, Hey Sheev, remember those last two. It says Shuv and Hey Sheev. Praise God. So these are all the Greek equivalents for these, or my fault, these Hebrew equivalents for this same Greek word right here in the Septuagint. But it means to turn to, as we look at the bold words, to cause to return, to bring back, to bring back. So it says feel regret or come back and feel sorry for and be converted or turn to, cause to return, bring back. To turn, to turn oneself, to turn oneself about, to turn back, to return, to turn back, to come back, to reform, to turn oneself about, to turn around, to return. Praise God. So it says, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. This is how you get your sins blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, when the Messiah returns, you get your sins blotted out by repenting and being converted. Now, let's look at something real quick. First John chapter three and verse four. Or actually, we're going to start at verse one. It says, behold, what manner of love the father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. It's talking about Christ. John is talking about Christ here. Beloved. Now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be because Christ has a return. The times of refreshing have not come or the times of amendment have not come yet. It says it is it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, this is how you know it's talking about the same time period, because now he's speaking about when he appears, when the times of refreshing shall come. It says when he shall appear, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. Because we expect to have our bodies changed the same way he died and resurrected and had his body changed because he didn't resurrect in the flesh that he died with. This is what we expect to happen. That's why we're killing off our flesh daily. We're awaiting the changes of our bodies to receive our spiritual form, just like Christ being the first from the dead. We expect to follow his example and be the behind him from the dead. Praise God for knowledge, wisdom and understanding. It says, for we shall see him as he is and every man that have this hope in him or every man that have this expectation in him purify himself, even as he is pure. You're going to purify yourself. You can't purify yourself with sin. You have to purify yourself with righteousness and godliness. Verse four says, whosoever committed sin transgressive also the law. Why? Because sin is the transgression of the law. Let's do this real quick. Translation comparison. The New Living Translation, the third one here in the third column, it says everyone who sins is breaking God's law for all sin is contrary to the law of God. The New International Version says everyone who sins 
breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. Praise God. Mm. The law of God. So let's do this. Remember that word, though. Remember the Hebrew equivalent for the word converted in Greek. Let's do this. Psalm chapter 19 and verse 7. It says the law of the Lord is perfect. All this stuff is lining up perfectly. Praise God. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So it says the law is perfect, and that's what converts your soul. Interesting stuff here, right? It says Torat or Torat, Yewa or Adonai, Temima, Meshivat, Meshivat, Nafesh. Praise God. Remember that. I'm not going to finish reading it because we want to zero in on the beginning of this verse. It says the law is, remember it said in 1 John 3 and 4, sin is lawlessness. Well, it says the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Look at the root word right there for converting. It literally says shuv. This is the Hebrew equivalent for the Greek word in Acts chapter 3 and 19. It's talking about the same thing. This is the literal understanding of what it means to be converted. And the soul, by the way, is the life. Nefesh means your life. That's what it means literally. My fault. Let's click the parson. The Hebrew parson, it says it's a common noun, both genders, masculine and feminine, singular, absolute. And what does it mean? Well, as y'all can see here, when you look at the KJV translation count, the count is 753 times, and it's used as soul 475 times, but life 117 times. Coming in second to soul. But listen. In the Strong's lexicon or dictionary, it says properly, it means a breathing, a breathing creature, i.e. or that is an animal of abstractly vitality, meaning your breath. Praise God. So this is literally talking about your life. You dwelling in this body, in the body of sin to inhabit this physical realm. Your spirit is inhabiting this body in this physical realm. It says breath. It says the soul. This Latin word right here is anima, which is related to the word animate or animation. Meaning you giving something life. So the word nefesh literally means your life. You can translate it that way in English when you see this word. So what does this mean? And there in the brown jobber briggs right here, it says life right there in the bowl. But what does this mean to keep it simple? My fault. This means your soul is your life. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the life. That's why it says repent and be converted. Repent. We looked up what repent means. That means turn back and feel sorry for or regret. That means you don't want that feeling no more. You know, you got to turn your life around. This is literally how you become converted according to the word of God. This is what they're not teaching in the churches. The law converts you based on the English understanding of these scriptures. And then when you go deeper into the actual text of the scriptures, the Hebrew and the Greek, what these scriptures were originally written in the language they were originally documented in. Let's look at this word. Meshivet. It's a hifil verb, or it's a verb with the hifil verb stem attached to it. What does this mean? The definition of the hifil verb stem means hifil usually expresses the causative action of call, meaning something is causing something, or something is being caused. Hifil is often used to form verbs from nouns and adjectives. It's an active participle, feminine singular construct. But let's look at what it means. Let's go into the Hifil verb stem. We don't just look at the outline of biblical usage. That's not how you confirm that you understand what these words mean. The outline of biblical usage literally means this is how this is how this word was translated in the outline of the Bible. That's why it's called the outline of biblical usage. But we want the definition. 
we, now we got to find the Hitfield verb stem in the Wilhelm Jacinius Hebrew Chaldee lexicon. Hmm. Here's the, the Pileo verb stem. We don't want that definition. Here's the Pulao verb stem. We don't want that. Here's the Hitfield verb stem right here. Hey, sheev. Hey, sheev. Praise God. And the future tense of this is Yashiv. Yashiv. It says the cause to return. Hence, to bring back. To be brought back to what? God. How? By way of keeping his law. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Means the cause to return. It says to withdraw. To repulse. Mm. To bring back. This right here. Hey, sheev nefesh. To bring back anyone's life. That's what that phrase means. That's how it's translated. To restore. How are you restored? By the law. By the laws, the statutes, the commandments, and understanding the judgments that the Most High laid out for his people. Mind y'all, remember this says, hey, sheev. Mm. As we go back here to Acts chapter 3. Because we can't make this up. Remember, hey, sheev, remember the from the Hebrew to the Greek. Remember this word right here. In the Hebrew equivalent. In relation to the Septuagint, what does it say right there, y'all? It says in times without number for shuv and hey, sheev. It's literally talking about the same thing. This is how you're converted. This is how you change your life. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Hmm. And let me go back and finish that scripture real quick. It says the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure or firm, making wise the simple. So this is how you're converted. Praise God or reformed, as it said in the definition in the Greek word by coming back to the law, because in first John three and four, we learn that sin is lawlessness. Praise God. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. This is some beautiful stuff, y'all. To understand the word of God just by reading what the text says and dealing with what it says, every single word you have to break down and understand. In the English, then uh, based on whether you're looking at the Old Testament or the New Testament, the Hebrew, Aramaic, or the Greek. Again, 1 John 3 and 4, whosoever committed sin transgressive also the law. What law? God's law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Praise God. So with that being said, hopefully this video was helpful. Um, much love to the family. Repent and be converted. Repent and be converted. Actually, my fault, y'all. Let me do this real quick. Repent and be converted. Let's just look at convert. In the English, too, from the 1200, circa 1300, it's a verb. It's an action, meaning a change or turn from one religion to another, especially to Christianity. From old French, conver converter, to turn around, to turn towards. What are you turning towards? If you turn it from your own ways and the way of life that you was living, as Peter told the people, in living in ignorance, what are you turning to? You're turning to God. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. To turn towards, to change, transform, convert, went over. From a Latin word, conver convertere. To turn around, to transform, ultimately from con, which means with or together. And verter, which means to turn. To turn, with or to turn, which comes from were, the Proto-Indo-European root were, which means to turn or to bend. Man. Hold on, y'all. Mm, mm, mm. Hold on. Mm, mm, mm. Hold on real quick. Hosea 5 and 15. The Most High says, I will go and return to my place. Till they acknowledge their offense, their ignorance, or their offenses in ignorance. What is the offense? The offense is sin. And seek my what? Seek my what? Seek my face in their affliction. They will seek me early.
Praise God. Mm, mm, mm. Psalm 105 and 4. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. You have to turn to the most high. Hold on real quick, y'all. So here in Ecclesiastes chapter 17, when you start from verse 10 with the context, from verse 10, the most high starts talking about um, through this individual who's writing this book of wisdom or writing in this part in this book of wisdom, he starts speaking about the children of Israel specifically. That's why verse 10 says, and the elect shall praise his holy name. But as we go down, it says, beside this, he gave them knowledge in the law of life, the law of life. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul, converting the life, the law of life for an heritage. Praise God as you keep going. Mm. It starts talking about our wickedness or how we're given to evil from our youth in our minds, in our spirit, first and foremost, because of our pride. It says in verse 24, but unto them that repent amongst the children of Israel, mind y'all, remember who Peter is speaking to as him and John approached the gate called beautiful and kept walking towards the temple. It says, but unto them that repent, he granted them return. What return? Shuv or Heshiv. And, com and comforted those that failed in patience. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Who are you returning to? Who is Shuv a reference to? Or what does that apply to? Return unto the Lord. It says, return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. This is all lining up perfectly. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. Because it's not an overnight process. If you've been doing wrong your whole life, to be converted is not going to happen overnight. It's a process that you have to stay committed to. Praise God. It says, turn again. Turn again. There's that word, heshiv, or shuv again. That, that would be the Hebrew word here. Or if this was a Greek, um, if this was originally a Greek uh, document before it was translated into English, it would, it would have the Greek word there that we found. And um, Acts chapter three and verse 19, but it says, turn again to the most high and turn away from iniquity. So, so you're turning away from sin, which is iniquity, and you're turning towards the most high. Why? For he will lead thee out of darkness into the light of health and hate thou abomination or disgusting things vehemently, meaning strongly. That's what vehement means. Praise God. So you can't make this stuff up. It's all right here. Praise God. But with that being said, hopefully this video was helpful once again. Um, much love to the family. Shalom, shalom. Street baptism out.